Welcome to this basic video about Classical Multidimensional Scaling MDS, also known as Principal Coordinates Analysis PCOA. Note that there are different types of multidimensional scaling techniques and that I will here mainly explain the Classical Multidimensional Scaling. I will first show some applications of multidimensional scaling and discuss similarities and differences with Principal Component Analysis. Then we will have a look at the math behind PCA and classical multidimensional scaling. Suppose that I would create a distance matrix between me and some of my friends. For example, the shortest way from my house to Mike's house is about 31.8 kilometers, whereas the distance from Mike's house to John's house is about 23.9. By using multidimensional scaling, I can project the distance matrix into two dimensions, which will give me a map of where my friends live in relation to me. Here is another example. Suppose that we have measured the diastolic and systolic blood pressure, the body mass index, and the total cholesterol level of five individuals. These four values can, for example, be seen as a health profile of person number one. Then we create a distance matrix with Euclidean distances based on the standardized data. For example, persons number one and two have the shortest distance to each other, which means that they have the most similar health profiles. When the distance matrix is projected into two dimensions, this will give us the exact same plot as we will get if we use principal component analysis. Similar to PCA, multidimensional scaling can be used to reduce the four variables in this case into just two. With this plot, we can, for example, see that person number three has a health profile that deviates quite much from the profiles of the other four individuals, which can also be seen in the distance matrix because person number 3 is quite far away from the other individuals if you study the Euclidean distances. The cool thing with multidimensional scaling is that we can use it with other types of distance measures. For example, in ecology and metagenomics, it is quite common to use the bray curtis dissimilarity metric between two samples based on the abundance of shared species. Suppose that we have the following abundance of four fish species in four different locations. We can then compute the Bray Curtis metric that ranges from zero, which indicates complete similarity, to one, which represents complete dissimilarity. If we compute the matrix based on this metric, we can project it into two dimensions, where we, for example, see that locations 1 and 4 have the most similar abundance of shared fish species. We will now have a look at the math behind PCA and classical multidimensional scaling PCUA. To illustrate the math, I will here use the following dataset. This dataset consists of measurements of the diastolic and systolic blood pressure, the body mass index, and the total cholesterol level of five individuals. We will now combine these four variables into just two by first using principal component analysis and then see how to do the same thing with multidimensional scaling. The first step in PCA is to center the data, which means that we first need to calculate the mean of each variable. We subtract the mean of each variable from the corresponding values of each variable so that we get the centered values. For example, 82 minus 87.6 is equal to negative 5.6. This value tells us that person number one has a diastolic blood pressure that is 5.6 lower than the average diastolic blood pressure of the five individuals. Another way to center the data is to make use of the centering matrix which can be computed by the identity matrix 
with the same number of columns and rows as the number of individuals in our data set, minus 1 over n, times a matrix of 1s. If you do the math, we will get the centering matrix. Then we multiply the centering matrix by our data matrix, so that we get the centered data. Later on, we will use this matrix to perform double centering of the distance matrix when we compute multidimensional scaling. After we have centered the data, the mean of each variable will be equal to zero. Since our variables have different scales, one usually also standardizes the data, which means that we divide the centered data by the sample standard deviation of each variable so that we get the following values. For example, if we divide negative 5.6 by 6.11, we'll get the value of about negative 0.917, which tells us that person number one has a diastolic blood pressure that is 0.917 standard deviations lower than the average diastolic blood pressure of the five individuals. After we have standardized the data, each variable should have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The second step in PCA involves the calculation of the covariance matrix. Remember that the covariance matrix computed on standardized data will be equal to the correlation matrix. For example, we see that the variable cholesterol level has a weak negative correlation with the other variables whereas the BMI has a strong positive correlation with the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. In step 3, we compute the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix and the corresponding eigenvalues. If you like to learn how to do matrix multiplications or compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues and how to calculate a covariance matrix, have a look at the following videos on my homepage. Since we like to combine these four variables into two new variables, we here keep only the first two eigenvectors, which have the largest eigenvalues. In step 4, we compute the scores of the first principal component with the following equation, where the weights are given by the values of the first eigenvector. For example, to calculate the score for the first person, we plug in its values in the equation and do the math. Let's place the score here. And then we do the corresponding calculations for the second person and so forth. Next, we calculate the scores of the second principal component, which uses the weights based on the values of the second eigenvector. By using this equation, we can compute the scores of the second component. We have therefore combined the four variables into just two in a way that maximizes the variance of these two new variables. Finally, we make a plot of these scores. Note that PC1 captures 78% of the total variance, whereas PC2 only holds 15%. This means that although it appears as if person number 5 and 4 have a large difference in the health profiles because they are far away from each other. They have actually quite similar profiles because the two points are relatively close if you only consider PC1, which captures most of the variance. The health profile of person number 3 deviates a lot from the other persons because it is far away if you only consider PC1. These are the eigenvectors we used to compute the principal component scores that were plotted like this. However, note that these eigenvectors with opposite signs also work fine because they will result in the following scores which can be rotated like this so that we get the exact same plot. I will now illustrate how to generate the exact same plot by using principal coordinates analysis. 
Let's use our previous standardized data. The first step in classical multidimensional scaling, or PCOA, is to compute a distance matrix. We'll here use the Euclidean distance as a similarity measure, because that will allow us to produce the same results as in PCA. These two values show the Euclidean distance between persons number 1 and 2. The Euclidean distance between persons number 1 and 2 can be calculated like this. This distance has been calculated based on the data of the first person, minus the data for the second person. Then we take the square root of the sum of the square differences, which will give us a distance of 1.426. To compute the distance between the first and the third individual, we simply plug in the values of these individuals. From this matrix, we clearly see that person number 3 deviates a lot from the other four individuals, because it has a relatively large distance to the other individuals. The two individuals that have the most similar health profiles are persons number 1 and 2, because they have the shortest distance from each other. Multidimensional scaling can be seen as we project the distances which are based on four dimensions into two dimensions. Let's denote our distance matrix like this, and place it up here. We then square the distances, so that we get the squared Euclidean distances. The second step in classical multidimensional scaling is to perform double centering of this matrix, which means that we will use the centering matrix that we computed at the beginning of this video. Double centering means that we multiply the matrix with the square distances by the centering matrix two times, which will give us matrix B. Let's put matrix B up here. Note that the mean value of each column in this centered matrix is equal to zero, which is true also for the rows because we have performed double centering. In the third step, we calculate the eigenvectors of matrix B. These are the five eigenvectors of matrix B. Since we are going to project the distance matrix into two dimensions, we save only the first two eigenvectors with the largest eigenvalues. These are the two eigenvalues that are associated with the first two eigenvectors. We then create a diagonal matrix of the two eigenvalues. In the final step, we compute the scores by multiplying the eigenvector matrix with the square root of the eigenvalue matrix. The scores can now be plotted like this. This plot is identical to the score plot from the principal component analysis. When you study this kind of plot, I recommend that you also study the distance matrix, because it will help you interpret the plot. For example, although persons number 1 and 2 seem to be far away from each other, they actually have the shortest distance, because they are close in the horizontal direction of the plot which captures most of the information about the distances. Also, remember that you can use other distance metrics that might be more suitable to define similarity or dissimilarity in your data. However, classical multidimensional scaling with distance measures other than Euclidean may result in negative eigenvalues. In such a case, one needs to use a correction method or use non-classical multidimensional scaling, such as the metric MDS. This was the end of this video about multidimensional scaling. Thanks for watching.